Well, as you know, we, um, A, were really inspired and, and um, received the blueprint as a gift, really, to the um, uh, cooperative movement here in the U.S. that yeah, we are focused on. And uh, really thought that we could uh, make a contribution, you know, building on the participation theme. So, see, we're doing, there's a lot of great work in capital and identity and in and, and other areas, too. But that's one where we thought, wow, we could really work with our club leaders and, and, and really explore with them what it takes to elevate participation, right? So, if we can use that as the big framework and... Um, and I'm, I'm curious to know, uh, really, maybe you could start off with, with just commenting on, on um, you know, how participation is so vital to moving us forward on our goals. Well, you know, participation is, I think, the most recognized part of the cooperative movement. Um, our democratic participatory framework is the thing that actually... Uh, really stands out uh, when people are, when you ask people about what, what is a cooperative, how does it work. Uh, so I think it's already very well established and it's perhaps a bit overused to say it's our DNA, but actually it is. That's where the key differentiator is for us. So uh, the, the other thing that makes me think that this is so vital and why I really like your program is because in my experience, you know, firstly, um, 10 years heading up Cooperatives UK, which is the key apex in the United Kingdom uh, when I was chief executive, um, my time on the global board of the ICA and of course the international year where I saw a lot of a lot of movements around the world. The one thing that struck me very forcibly is that when a cooperative fails, which it doesn't very often, but when it does, it is usually a governance failure. Mm -hmm. You know, it's often associated with ossified um, boards, for instance, and, and governance. So they're not refreshing their boards by electoral challenge. They're not. Um, they're not introducing new initiatives. They become sort of inward-looking, stagnant, and and defensive. And that's pretty typical of my experience in the UK when I had to go around and tell boards that they needed to have an active membership policy. So for me. Uh, Failure of governance is always, almost always, a failure of, of membership policy and participation. So I think it's vital that we really develop and build our participation theme so that we don't rest on our laurels, but that we actually demonstrate we can do more with it. And what I really love about your program and, and the one pager that you send out to your, to your co-op leaders there in the US um, is the whole issue of not just understanding each of the, the bits, you know, to own, um, to serve, to belong. I've missed one. Wait a minute. <laughs> What's the other one? Tell me. Tell use. me. Use. Yeah, use, that's it. Um, <laughs> each, one of them, each, one of them is, each one of them is really powerful in, in identifying our cooperative uh, difference. But what I really liked was um, the new paradigm, the participation's pa new paradigm. I thought that was great because it got to the heart of what we're trying to do in the blueprint, which is to take it to new, new levels, to elevate it, as you said. Um, and strategic intent, that, that little phrase really sort of struck home with me. Let me give you an example. Tonight when I'm finished talking to you this very day, I'm going off to um, a cooperative and fair trade event at a local small cooperative society, a consumer co-op in the UK, uh, it's the middle of cooperative. Uh, it's the middle of fair trade fortnight in the United Kingdom. The co-op movement here has mainstreamed. We were first to mainstream fair trade, and so what they're doing is not just having a nice fair trade event, showing and giving the chocolate and the coffee and the wine, which would be a great member event on its own. But they've opened it up to the town, so you're bringing in all the other members of the community. And if you're trying to make people feel get a sense of belonging. The key and core thing, I think, is to make them sense that these are people who have the same view of life, the same view of the world, the same uh, regard to other human beings that you have. And I think this is a, this fair trade event, and it, they're all happening all over the country at the moment, is, is such an important one in doing just that. It's perfect in showing that this is where you belong. It's your belong bit, you know. Um, you belong to this organization which not only... Um, provides you with an economic return and, and the opportunity to own this and the opportunity to to purchase from it and and, and all that all that sort of very solid stuff.
but it's where you belong. It's a set of people with the same values and views. And so I think that that is about the strategic intent of cooperation. And it said it all to me, and it put tonight's second meeting into perspective for me. So um, I think it's great. And, um, you know, participation is one thing in the blueprint that we haven't done so much on yet. Uh, we're building the program for it uh, now. We've started on sustainability. We've started on uh, image identity uh, and the others. But participation is coming on stream now. So what you're doing is a critical part of that and a very important part. You, you've really defined it beautifully. So uh, it struck home to me as being very important that no matter how big or how small your cooperative is, an active membership policy, active engagement policy with your members is vital. And, and I really do believe that what you're doing there and trying to encourage that is great. So all, all power to your elbow, as we would say, and uh, I look forward to working with you closer uh, and on, on the whole issue of participation going forward. Great. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it.